Hello everyone, it's Victor here once again and welcome to Victor's Tiny Kitchen. And for today, we will be cooking Biko or Glutinous Rice Cake. And my version today is going to be Mindanaoan style, the southern part of the Philippines, particularly the Lao version. Making Biko is very simple and the steps are easy to follow. And there's not a lot of ingredients that you need in order for you to make this dish. The process though is a little bit tedious because you need to make your caramel and also you need to cook your rice and monitor so that the bottom part of your rice is not going to be tart so you need to keep on monitoring and stirring it every now and then these are all the ingredients that we need there's not a lot as you can see guys I have here about 8 cups of glutinous rice that I have thoroughly washed and then I have about 4 cups of brown sugar I have 450 grams of grated baby coconut which we're going to caramelize later on for our topping and I have a liter and a half of coconut milk we're gonna use a little bit of salt so let's get right at it traditionally when we cook our biko in the Philippines we would use a big karahai or a wok it's a Philippine made wok and we cook this outdoors with a big karahai and an open fire that's the whole fun of doing it because Everybody pitches in, like someone could be making the fire, someone could be preparing the wok, or somebody is also grating the coconut and extracting the juice from out of the grated coconut, and then someone's cooking the rice. So everybody pitches in, and there's a whole fun of doing it. But since we don't have the luxury here in North America, I'm just gonna use my rice cooker here. So first step is we're gonna cook our rice so I'm gonna put in my rice here in this pot make sure nothing is left behind and then I'm gonna add about one third of our coconut milk here it's about one third and then we're gonna add water remember guys there's eight cups of glutinous rice in here and the amount of water that I put in is about a liter and a half. So that's enough to cook our rice later on. Of course the rice is gonna the rice is gonna rise. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add about a third, no sorry, about one third of the sugar as well. So that's that. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna mix them all together. Make sure the sugar is melted before we'll cook it. So that's done. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start cooking our rice in our rice cooker. And I cook this the same way I cook my regular rice, guys. Just set it on white rice. Like I said earlier, we're going to monitor our rice to make sure the bottom is not tart. And then right at this point, we're waiting for our rice to cook there. We are going to make our caramel. In the Philippines, we call it latik. So it's just a mixture of sugar and coconut milk. So I'm going to turn on my cooktop here and I'm going to pour in my coconut milk, all of it. And then I'm going to add sugar, so that's enough. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a stir. This process here, guys, of caramelizing your coconut milk needs a lot of attention as well because you have to regularly stir it and make sure that you know it doesn't burn underneath your pan because it's sugar right sugar burns easily and then your fire should be just moderate like in this case right now it should be medium so there's one thing that I forgot to mention is the option to use cinnamon cinnamon is a very good option to use for your biko. It just adds that beautiful aroma and taste into your biko. Another option as well is to use jackfruit. Add it into your uh, mixture here while cooking it. And the aroma of the jackfruit is infused into your caramel. And it adds a flavor to it. But right now we're gonna be using ground cinnamon. So right at this point guys, I'm turning my heat to medium high. Just to make sure the mixture here boils quickly. And once it starts to move, we're gonna turn down our heat to medium low. As you can see here guys, even if our mixture of coconut milk and sugar here is not simmering yet, but I'm already stirring it. 
I mean, just to make sure the out caramel doesn't burn like at the bottom of it. You know, the secret to making a great caramel is to, as much as possible, constantly stir your mixture. I've done this like so many times already. Right at this point, I am going to add about a tablespoon of cinnamon. I'm going to stir it. Oh, I love the smell of it now. As you can see, my hands are full here, guys. So I'm watching this caramelization of our coconut milk. At the same time, I'm watching our rice here just to make sure that it's not tart and burnt. So at this point, guys, I'm just going to add in a pinch of salt into our caramel here. And same thing goes for our rice over here. So as you can see here, our mixture has reduced significantly. So that means that we're close to having a caramel here. So at this point, our caramel is almost done. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add in my baby coconut. I'm going to give it a stir again. The reason why I'm using baby coconut here as a topping later on is because I want it to complement the uh, coconut milk that we're using here as a base. So guys, we're back here and finally our rice is done. It's not totally cooked, it's just al dente, which is perfect because we're still gonna pop it into the oven later on and bake it. And our caramel is also done here. So as you can see guys, I am lining up my baking dish here with banana leaves. I just wanna go authentic today because in the Philippines when we make this dish, there's always a line of banana leaves on our baking dish or our karahai or wok. So it's closer to home. Nothing's wrong with that, right? So I'm just gonna flatten our glutinous rice here in the baking dish. So this is a long process I'm doing. Some people when they make this dish, they just cook their glutinous rice thoroughly, like completely cooked, and then they just pour in the uh, caramel on top of it, and then that's done. But mine, I wanna make it a little bit more tea juice. Maybe I like it better that way. It's because I've done it many times and I always find good results when you bake it. So this one goes to the oven guys. This is already preheated at 350 degrees. We're gonna bake it for an hour. We're back here and I've just taken off my rice cake from the oven. It's been an hour and it's been cooked. And at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in our caramel here on top of our glutinous rice. So at this point, I'm just going to pop this back into our oven and bake it for another 5 to 10 minutes. So guys, we're back here and I've just heard my oven beeping. See here that? That means our biko is already cooked. So right now, I'm going to take it off the oven. This is it. So we'll just let this cool down and once that's done, we're gonna get back here and start decorating. So guys, we're back here and our deco has already cooled down. Now we're gonna decorate it. And I have my rainbow sprinkles here. Should add color into our deco. And that is a lot of sprinkles. And we're gonna make grits. Start by doing it in the middle. I'm using a pizza slicer here. It's not working. It's not working, so we're gonna use our dough slicer. So make another grid across, and then we will make rectangles. One more here across. So that's done. So guys, we're back here, and I'm ready to taste my Biko. Looks colorful with the rainbow sprinkles. I can't wait to taste it. Oh my God. This is gorgeous taste. Amazing taste. It really hits home. Actually, it kind of transported me back home tasting this one. 
It's a lovely taste. It brings back a lot of good memories. I could finish the whole baking dish here of this dish and I would be guilty. So I'm not gonna do it. So you've seen just how easy and simple it is to make this dish. Some people are intimidated to make this because of the long, tedious process of doing it. But once you know the system, once you know the steps, and you know how to make all the preps, everything comes easy. And then all your effort will be rewarded with something like this, a beautiful, delicious, heavenly dish. So try it guys, and if you have any questions, just write them down in the comment sections below. And if you have any comments, any suggestions, um, same thing, write it down in the comment section. And if you like what I did today, please don't forget to click the um, share, like, and the subscribe buttons in case you haven't yet. Enjoy your Holy Week. If you want to make this and prepare something like this for Holy Week, it will be perfect. So let me know how it goes. And thank you for watching today and hope to see you in my next video. Bye now.